Uh, right now, on Joe Danaher, the Swans, the buddy injury and the likelihood that he could miss most of the year, do you think that changes the momentum and whether they can now take Joe in? And if not, where can Joe now go? Well, absolutely, because this is the record with their big key forward, Sam Reid. We know how many games he has missed. He's missed. He's played 143 of a possible 244. Tippett was uh, unsuccessful, really, when you look at the bulk of his deal, just 59% of the games that he played. Buddy now has been durable to this point, but what can we expect in the next three years? And then Danaher, who's hardly played in the last 18 months. It'd be a roll of the dice to bring you him can't, in. You can't others. have Reed, yeah. Franklin and Danaher all injury prone in your forward line. So for the Swans, how about we draft a forward, a key forward? I don't expect them to be in the premiership window moving forward. They finished 15th last year without Franklin and him maybe not playing much at all in the last three years. They... I don't think they can win the well, Premiership in the next three years. It's so difficult why... not to look a gift horse in the mouth, though. This is a player who want, is saying, I want to come up to Sydney. I understand that, but there's a lot of players that want to go to a club. Like, yeah, it'd be, you're not going to just take the risk of a player that hasn't played for 18 months, hardly, and even in this period, has not been able to get himself Sam right, would, Sam Reid would probably be the casualty, wouldn't he? They couldn't take a risk on three forwards going into next year. I think they've been incredibly yeah. patient with Sam Reid. In the clubs that would be in line for Joe? Like, yeah, if, I... If not Essendon, because he would assume he still wants to leave, right? It appears as though that he, he probably will leave. So I think Melbourne's at the top of the list. When you look at their leading goal scorer last year, it was Petraka on 22. I mean, you can't have that as a key forward. If Melbourne think that they're in the window, which clearly they do, there's a, there's a role there as a backup ruck as well. Then I look at Adelaide. I mean, uh, Tex is 31. Uh, how long has he got left? And I just think Adelaide needs someone who can sell some tickets. I don't think it's going to be a happy time at Adelaide for the next three or four years. So at least he can put some bums on seats. No Eddie Betts there. Collingwood, I've mentioned, dependent on Jordan Ngoi and what he does. But I think Danaher's a better fit than Mason Cox in that forward line as the key target. Then Geelong with Tom Hawkins and Gary Ablett, their leading goal scorers last year. Hawkins is about to turn 32. So Geelong always looking to top up and, and stay at the top of the ladder. Perhaps Joe's a fit there. And then Hawthorne, clearly they went after Jonathan Patton to fill a need there. So it's dependent on his output. But with Bruce and Gunston getting up there in age as well, I think there's a fit there at the Hawks. Danaher at Hawthorne, that's just too weird. I like it. Uh, speaking of uh, Danaher, he revealed on the weekend, or it was revealed on the weekend, that he's living regionally in Victoria. Couldn't believe this. How did this, how did this hit you? Hachi, uh, Tom Bell Chambers, an article and a quote from Tom Bell Chambers there. He's made a couple of lifestyle changes. He's living out close to me in Dalesford now. I don't know the demographics of Melbourne too too well, uh, Hutchie, but I've done a Google search. Melbourne. Me yeah, <laughs> correct. The pronunciation also gets me. But it's an hour and 12 minutes away, his home, to Essendon's facility, which means he's spending two hours and 24 minutes in a car every day. If I've got bad groins and I've had an issue with bad groins, the last thing I'm doing is sitting in a car for two hours, two and a half hours a day. I mean, you might say it's a small one, but his career is on the line. He, his, his professionalism has been questioned by former teammate Brendan Goddard. That's not a smart decision. Well, in, can we just put some caution on this? COVID has seen a lot of people relocate to regional Victoria or seaside Victoria. So we don't know whether this was just a two-month thing. Maybe he did it, and I would totally understand why he might do that. Do you really think that it's that... that much no, it's worse. A it's a, it's driving a, necessarily against the traffic where, where he would have been if he was living inside metropolitan well, Melbourne. Well, it's a, it's a one percenter, Caro. But I I would hate to be sitting in a car for two and a half hours per day just to get to training when I've got bad groins and when I've hardly played in the last eighteen months. A one percenter. But Joe, his career's on the line. He's got to be looking at all those things. Okay.